Welcome back. Well, today we're still on Project Weekend because, as I said before, the projects are backing up, and if I don't get them out to you, I'm probably going to end up doing them and not even filming them, and what's the point of that? Well, I had something else in mind for today, but yesterday when I was out with Jocelyn, we went to Goodwill, and this is the only thing that ended up in my cart. And as I'm sure you can all tell easily, this is a Cabbage Patch doll. And I thought today we would look at how to clean and reclaim dolls. Because what we're going to be doing to this Cabbage Patch doll, yes I know, is something we can do with any doll. So I'm going to go over the steps. That's not for you, baby. I'm going to go over the steps. These steps will apply to any doll you take in. So, I'll see if I can get rid of him, and we'll be right back. Can I get rid of you? Well, the cat is only semi-gone, as you can see from his tail, but at least he's no longer playing with the doll. I paid $2.99 for this Cabbage Patch doll. This is one of the original series of Cabbage Patch dolls from the early 80s. And I remember that craze vividly. I think it was Christmas of 1983, but I'm not, I'm not 100% sure about that. And I went into a store with my mother. It was a Woolworths store. And the only reason we were in that store in the first place was because she parked at the mall outside the Woolworths store. And we had to go through Woolworths to go to the store we were actually heading for. And... Suddenly, I looked at an aisle, and there were boxes on boxes of these dolls, and my mother looked at me and said, oh my goodness, those are ugly. You're not going to start collecting those, are you? And I thought, good heavens, no. But in the back of my mind, I remembered that a friend of mine had told me that a friend he worked with was looking for Cabbage Patch dolls for his little girls for Christmas, that this was the big thing. And I thought, well, I barely remembered what the dolls were. These were certainly awful looking dolls. But I thought, well, I'll grab a couple. And then I looked at the price and they were $30 a piece. And I thought, oh my goodness. And my mother said, well, grab the two dolls. You can put them on layaway for $5. If they're the right dolls, you come and get them. If they're the wrong dolls, we'll come in and cancel the layaway. Bang, didn't think anything else of it, brought them to lay away. And I'm thinking, this is the end of the story. I got home, I called my friend. And he was like, you better get right down there and buy those dolls right away. Pay for those dolls and get them out of the store. So I thought, oh, this is nonsense. And I went down and took the dolls off layaway. And by the time we got to my mother's car, we were surrounded by a crowd of people begging to buy those dolls because we had two of them. And they were gone off the shelves. Apparently, they had sold out in minutes. We just happened to be in the right place at the right time. And one man was cleaning out his wallet, shoving cash at me, saying, I can give you $400 a piece for those dolls right now. And if you won't take cash, I can go higher if you'll take a check. I was floored. Just floored. Well, we managed to stick those dolls in the trunk of the car and make good our escape. And my friend's friend got the dolls for his little girls for Christmas. But I was 
absolutely amazed. I couldn't imagine being swamped by a bunch of strangers. One woman was crying, saying that if she didn't get a doll for her little girl, that her little girl was going to have a nervous breakdown for these are not even my dolls to be giving away. They're promised. So I thought this is nuts. This is right up there with hula hoops and pet rocks and all the rest of the foolishness from bygone eras. And now, look, I've actually voluntarily purchased one. So, what we are going to talk about with this doll is what you do when you take in any kind of doll with one exception. The one exception I want to pull out of this mix right now is collectible dolls that are still in the bar box and they've been purchased as NRFB, meaning not removed from box or never removed from box. You buy a doll like that, you're buying it either from the manufacturer directly or from a seller you know and trust. Put the doll away and don't take it out of the box. Certain collectible dolls lose value the minute you put your grubby little paws on them. So, bang pop the box in a closet somewhere because those are investment dolls. We're not talking about those dolls. You get a doll and it doesn't have to be like this. It can be uh, any sort of doll. Not, not necessarily vintage, not necessarily antique. It can be something you just bought off eBay last week. The first thing you're going to want to do with your doll is strip it. And that's what I'm going to do here. I bought this doll for $2.99 and it was marked as is. So I had Jocelyn take a look at it to see if she was spotting the as is, whereas I was not. And we decided it was because the doll was dirty and the doll's clothing is dirty. So I'm going to get this off. I should take the shoes off first. Yeah, I guess it's like anything else. You know, pull your pants off over your shoes one shoe and we've got another now fortunately for me well actually it's not fortunate it's one of the reasons I bought the doll the doll has a complete outfit the outfit is marked cabbage patch kids and she's got the shoes and whatever else and she appears to be in good condition without needing any repair except these little corduroy overalls are really dirty. Now, let's take a look at this. All right, we have the clothing off, and here is our doll. Now, I did not take the clothing off. I did open it up in the store, but this is the first time I'm seeing the full naked doll. And as you can see, the doll is in good shape. I don't imagine its clothing has ever been off of it because it doesn't have grubby little children paw prints all over the doll body. So, once we've established that the doll is in good shape, let's turn to the clothing. So what are we going to do with this? The clothing is in good shape as well. Um, it's original clothing, as I say, the overalls have the Cabbage Patch Kid logo on it. But the blouse has Coleco Industries, and that's the company that, um, that was turning out Cabbage Patch Kids when they became that big fad. So we know the clothing is original. Great. The clothing is not clean. So we are going to avoid the temptation to throw this in the washing machine. We are going to toss this in the sink with a little bit of soap and water and sort of gently soak it out. Now, where you're going to always see dirt on pieces is right here across the shoulders. That's where the dust will have settled. And I keep smelling this to see if it smells like cigarette because it does have the look of something that might have been in a smoker's home, but I'm not smelling it. I'm not smelling anything. So, these are going to go into 
some warm water. And remember this, this was from our cleaning videos last weekend. This is Castile soap. That's what they're going to be cleaned with. We always start with the least um, harsh products, the gentlest products first. Castile soap, as I said last time I, I spoke about this, you can wash the baby in this. So this is very gentle soap. We are looking at, um, this is cotton. You know, it doesn't say, but it feels like cotton. The corduroy is cotton. Um, and corduroy, that'll be our word for the day. Corduroy just means cloth of king. So it's the king's cloth, and they had developed, you know, some centuries ago, a method for weaving cloth that had ridges in it. It's called whales. And this became very, very popular, uh, especially in Flanders, which is where the clothing industry in the medieval world had really taken off. So this is cloth of kings, corduroy. Um, it's just going to soak. It's possible it may have some fading. We'll see because you're following with me along with this. I don't know how that is going to turn out because I haven't washed it yet. But while we are on that, let me show you what I did do. See our little bow here? Well, that's not what it looked like. I did this bow already so that you could see a finished bow. And here is the before bow. And I want to show you how to deal with doll fabrics in general. With the Cabbage Patch Kid, the clothing is larger. It's almost baby sized. But with small items, you know, um, a Barbie swimsuit, for example, is like this big. The way we deal with this is something called finger pressing. And what I'm doing here with my hand is I'm shaking it around in a cup of water. My fingers are now wet. And I'm just running the ribbon through my fingers. You can do this with larger bits of fabric with an entire doll dress. I'm just getting it damp. All right, see now. We've got the wrinkles out of that section. And we're going to do the same thing over here. We're just finger pressing it out. We just don't want it to look scruffy. We want it to look pretty like the other bow. Now, I have not taken this out of the doll's hair. I haven't untied it. So we're just going to pull up our ribbons and we're going to tie a new bow and I'm doing this one backwards because that's how this bow was set up. This bow may have been actually tied by a left-handed person or tied upside down and it's a double bow. In other words there are two ribbons here and what we have to do is take those two ribbons and tie them into a single bow because that's how these dolls' hair was done originally. So, let's get that. Now, the only really tricky part in tying little doll bows is making sure you don't pull the tails right through your knot. Uh, I find that to be quite a challenge. So I'm constantly going back and readjusting the bows. Um, and this one, it's no more difficult than your average bow. But because they are hair bows, you always want them to look especially nice and pretty. And now I'm separating the tails so that you can see it's actually two bows together. So our hair bows are done. Hmm. 
another little trick, tag. We're going right back in and we are finger pressing this tag out too. Usually when someone purchases a doll, they want the doll, even if it's not new, to look crispy new. And one of the easiest ways you can achieve this is just by straightening out that tag, taking out the wrinkles, and making it look new and not worn. So, there we go. Now our tag is sticking out, and I will eventually, when I put the clothing back on that doll, I'm going to hold the tag over right against the doll's body, then dress the doll, and that tag will stay in place looking crispy new. And it actually does. There's no fraying on the end of this tag. Okay, so we've got the clothing off soaking. We finger pressed our little bows. Now comes the challenge. The doll's body is very clean, but the face is not. This is a remarkably grubby little doll face. So, we're going to open up our soap. Up, up. And remember, I've got that little cup of water over there I was using and we're going to wash the doll's face. Um, that's all we are doing so far. In fact, uh, what we are doing today is simply using two of my favorite cleaning tools, the toothbrush and the Castile soap. So I want to get this clean, but also if you'll notice from this face, and those of you who are familiar with Cabbage Patch Kids don't need to keep referring to the doll's face. You know what this is like. They have little dimples and little squished in noses, which I consider to be little dirt catchers. So we're just going to go in with the toothbrush and sort of clean out those areas. Here, let me show you this way. just going to brush the doll's little indentations to make sure we're getting all of the dirt out of it. Now, if this doll had been grubbier than this, and this is actually a, a doll that's in good, clean condition. It needed very little work. One of the reasons it was an attractive purchase for me. Um, if the doll had been much filthier, I would certainly need to look at some other cleaning compounds if the Castile soap didn't do it. Look at that. So the soap is doing its job. And fortunately, all we are dealing with on this doll is superficial dirt and dust, probably. I imagine the doll's been sitting around for a long time. But again, we've got our toothbrush. We're going into the little divots and indentations to make sure when this is clean, this is actually clean. Now, what if we had to clean the doll's body? Well, this is soft cloth. We could actually completely immerse this doll in a sink full of water. That wouldn't be my first choice, but if it was really filthy, we might have to resort to that. We can superficially wash the cloth. It's just cloth. We get a little soap, a little rag, and most of the surface dirt will just come scrubbing right off. So that's something always to keep in mind. Now we are lucky we're only dealing with surface dirt and we haven't had to alter the doll in any way. But it's worth mentioning if we did. The doll's hair is made of yarn and this end of the pigtail is tied off with matching yarn. This part is tied off with ribbon. The yarn is glued together underneath this ribbon. 
and this little mess here, these little curls, are just loops of yarn that have been sort of stitched in. So they are loops. You can just there, find one of them. Well, I'm not going to be able to find one big enough to stick the toothbrush through. I was hoping I would. Yes, I will. See, right there. It's a loop. It's not cut at the ends. And it's in pretty good shape. However, like most yarn hair dolls, the surface area has gotten a little linty, little pills and lint. Water again. Just going to tap this down. What that's going to do is the, um, the frayed ends of the yarn, the little lint balls and little pills and so on, are just going to be tapped right back down into the doll's hair and it's not going to have that that you know linty fuzzy look that's fuzz that's the word i'm looking for um we're getting rid of that fuzz and so all we really have done to this doll aside from cleaning her up a little, is cleaning her clothing. Not bad. If the doll had a lot of dirt, what would I go to after the Castile soap? And this is an easy one. I would go to 409 uh, or a similar cleaner. If I chose to do one of my own cleaners, which I probably would, but you don't have to make your own cleaners, 409 will do it. But I would put a little bit of Castile soap, a little bit of vinegar, mix it together. That would be my next step. This is not for you. You weren't even invited to come back into the video. I just want you to know that. Okay. Yes, I love you. Don't knock anything over. We would go to harsher cleaners. Um, if the doll had scratches on her face, if the doll were really in bad shape, facial scratches I would buff out with metal polish. Yeah, that's why I like Brasso so much. You can actually clean vinyl with it. In this case, we're nowhere near that bad off. This is a doll that was probably well cared for. It was loved. It was played with but not abusively. So, you get a doll in. First, remove the clothing. Examine the doll. Look for damage. Look for stains. Look for dirt. If the clothing needs to be cleaned. Just soak it in warm, soapy water. And when these pieces, because they're still right here, when these pieces come out, I will gently squeeze the water out of them. I will dry them flat. And again, finger pressing. I will just smooth them down with my fingers. They will not be ironed. Never, ever press doll clothes. You can steam them if you want. Never press them. If you press doll clothing, all these little tiny seams are going to show up in the pressing. So if you press, you're going to see the end of the seams. Anybody who's ever done any pressing knows exactly what I'm talking about. You can definitely steam them if you would like. No pressing ever. Just let them dry out flat. And then when they are dry, they're going back on the doll along with her little shoes, which I think are probably going to need to be just soaked. It's not a big deal. They're not really dirty. And then we are going to see how well this doll does. I think I'm going to offer the doll at auction because I think this is one of those things where I would like you to see what the doll is worth. It's not a lot. There was a time when these dolls were fetching huge amounts of money. I told you I could have made $400 walking from the store to the car that first Christmas. 
that actually would have been $800 because he was offering me $400 each for the dolls. Uh, wow, no, the prices are not like that anymore. Even when the dolls are mint in box or never removed from box, that's not what they're worth. The craze is over. So a doll like this is probably worth somewhere between $20 and $30. This doll will probably go on the higher end. The reason for that is I am going to make sure this doll is cleaner and prettier and her clothing is better and she is more well done than any other doll. So when you go on to eBay and you see 40 Cabbage Patch dolls, this is the one you're going to want. Uh, that's what I do with my dolls anyway. I try to make sure my doll is the most desirable because when you are dealing with vintage dolls, many times the dolls are pretty much the same, you know. A Barbie is a Barbie is a Barbie. You need to make sure your doll is the best. And that's what's going to happen with this little one. She is going to have this smooth, pretty, unwrinkled little tag and her little bows are going to be pretty and she's not going to have fuzz on her hair and she's going to be all squeaky clean and someone who wants a Cabbage Patch doll will scoop her out first and that's always what you want when you are selling online. It's not just a question of selling your stuff. You want your stuff to just scooch just a little bit head and shoulders above everyone else's. You want to make sure yours are the items that are noticed, that are sought after. And with dolls, best way you can do that is make sure they are clean, they are presentable, they're clear. Just treat them like it's your little granddaughter and you're getting her ready for church on Sunday or something. You just want to make sure that someone's going to look at that doll and say, that's the one I want. And it only takes a little tiny bit of extra effort. Fix the hair bows, tamp down the hair, wash the face, wash the clothes. Very, very easy to do. Now, heads up on one of our next projects. This, this was $1.99. The price tag is still on it. Jocelyn got this at the same Goodwill. This is an American Girl baby doll. It's got its little jumper, um, jumper onesie, I don't know. I haven't been around babies in a long time. I don't know what they call this stuff anymore. This doll has a stain on its face. I don't know if you can see that, but it looks like somebody just kissed it right on the face. And we're going to be looking at removing that stain because that stain looks like marker to me. And if it is marker, that means it's settled into the vinyl of the doll and we have to draw it out of the vinyl. Those are the most difficult stains to remove and we're going to be working on that one. And then Jocelyn will have her little baby doll. Okay, well, let's see, before we sign off, um, I'm going to show some pictures at the end of this video. The doll before she was touched and then after she's cleaned with her clothes, etc. And I don't know about you, but I like that, you know, moving out of the video with a little slideshow and some music. I think it makes it a little lively. Sweetheart, you're, no, that's not your doll. No, it's not yours. You can't have it. I'm sorry. You have your own toys. He's actually been pretty good for a cat who's been right on top of me throughout the entire video. So I have to say that. I think I'm going to give him a little treat when we're done. Okay, so slideshow on our way out. And remember, if you want to get in touch with me, do it through video comments. Um, my spam filters are excellent, which means if you contact me any other way, the spam filters are probably going to send you off to the spam cemetery. This is how to get in touch with me. So next week, hopefully, we will get back on track on some other stuff now that we've got some of the projects covered. 
And remember, everything we talked about with our little Cabbage Patch Cutie here applies to any doll you take in. So, take their clothes off, check them out, clean them up, clean their clothes, put them back together. Try not to make any changes in the doll if you can avoid it. You know, in other words, hair comes with a double bow, put it back in the double bow. You want them to look as original as possible. All right, I'll see you all next week. Have a pleasant week and ta-ta. Thank <laughs> you.